the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> on King! On you Husky! <laughs> King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> Shortly after daybreak, two men stood watching a distant sled and dog team break tracks through the snow. Hidden from view behind two huge rocks, they waited, eyes cold with greed and watchfulness. See, I told you it wouldn't be long after daybreak. Yeah, you're right. I gotta hand it to you, Bert. You sure had this one studied out. Huh? <laughs> the old man carrying that haul of dust, you think I'd take any chances? That's why we've been lucky. When you take time to plan, there aren't any mistakes. I ain't worrying none about the mistakes. All I care about is get my hands on as much gold that's mine for the taking. Uh, you just be careful how you take it. As long as you stick with me, you won't have to worry about that noose waiting to drop over your head. I ain't complaining. You can fill a poke faster this way than peddling beaver skins. How much do you calculate he's carrying? Plenty. Thomas has been making this trip to the bank for a long time. <laughs> Surprised nobody thought of this before. Uh, got your gun ready? Yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, you can make him out pretty plain now. Wait till he gets past the rocks. You're taking a chance of him getting away, ain't you? Well, not if we shoot fast enough. We'll never know what hit him. All right. You're calling the cards. Your sister suspect anything? Muriel? <laughs> no. Now, remember what I said. Wait till he gets past the rocks. I heard you. You ain't got far to mush, old timer. See that gun on top of the sled? You want to get him before he has a chance to use it. Come on, Bert! All right, Slim, let him have it. that dust and we'll clear out of here. I don't like the idea of being around dead men too long myself. Yeah, he's carrying some of it. <laughs> Look at this. Ooh, well. What's that? Oh, the old timer's poke. I'll just pocket it for my trouble. You got the rest of it? Yeah. And believe me, I ain't ever seen so much dust in one hole in my life. Come on, then. And what about the dogs? Leave them. Traveling with daylight, Sergeant Preston stopped a short time later at Bart Johnson's cabin, several miles north of Higby. It was Bart's sister, Muriel, who explained. Yes, Bart was out early this morning. Does he always uh, make the round of his trap line so early? Bart? <laughs> Goodness, Sergeant, I never know whether he'll make his rounds early or late. But last night he mentioned he'd be gone before I'd have breakfast ready. I offered to get up early and get it for him, but he said not to bother. And I am anxious for him to come back. Why? Well, you see, today's Bart's birthday. No one pays much attention to birthdays up here in the Yukon, but well, I'm going to be married soon. Bart and I won't be together much longer, and well, here it is. I want him to have this ring. Say, that's a real present. Bart's always liked it, so I thought I'd surprise him. Hope it fits. <coughs> <laughs> King likes it, doesn't he, Sergeant? <laughs> Quiet, King. It isn't that I'm not delighted to see you, Sergeant, but I can't help wondering what brings you and King to our part of the Yukon. I guess you might say the line of duty brings me here, Muriel. Oh? Isn't that Bart coming now? I thought I saw him. You're right, it is Bart. Muriel, I... Uh... Hello, Bart. 
Preston. Well, <laughs> a little surprised to see you here. I just thought I'd stop by. Bart, I think you've forgotten something. Oh, forgotten something? Yes. It's your birthday. Oh. <laughs> I don't keep track of them. Your sister does. Uh-huh. And I have a present for you. Well, wait till I take up. A... Why, it's a... a... ring is a rare present in the North. Put it on. It might not fit, you know. All right. There. Hey, got it on, but I'll never get it off again. Is it too tight? Well, tight enough that you won't be able to change your mind and want it back. Oh. <laughs> Where are you going, Monty? Old King and I will be getting along. Won't you stay? Bart, what's that that fell out of your parka? It looks like a poke, an initial. Why, oh, Slim asked me to take it into Higby for him. <laughs> Sorry you're leaving, Preston. Yes. Well, uh, goodbye, Muriel. Goodbye, Sergeant. Come back again. I expect to. Goodbye. Bye. All right, King, get the dogs up. <laughs> On King! <laughs> On you, Husky! <laughs> As the great dog King led the Mounties dog team, Preston's thoughts dwelt on Muriel and her brother Bart. I'm sure he's tied up with those gold robberies. How to prove it. And Muriel. I'll be glad when that girl marries and has someone else to look after. <coughs> What's wrong, King? <coughs> what is it, boy? <coughs> oh, oh, you husky. <coughs> you lead the way, fella. <coughs> oh, nuzzling around in the... Well, that's Ray Thomas' dog team. But where... Ray. Why don't we turn him... Dead. So that's what you wanted me to see, King, huh? Those rocks concealed it. And that was why Bart had the poke initial RT. He's responsible for this. <coughs> All right, King, I'm coming. Oh, there was another fellow. They ran out from behind the rocks, huh? They must have gotten all the gold Ray carried from those claims in the hills. Get the dogs up, King. This is one crime Bart Johnson's going to pay for. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Johnson cabin, Bart had watched from a window to see what trail Preston would take. Seeing him turn to the right, he knew it would only be an hour before the Mountie would come on Ray Thomas, dead in the snow. He sent Muriel into town for supplies, and as her sled disappeared on the trail, the murderer worked feverishly. He rushed from the cabin to his sled, and driving the dogs mercilessly, fear of capture urging him on, he raced to his partner Slim. Oh, who are you, Malibus? Hey, Bart, you're riding like you was going to... explain this to you later. Get your sled and follow me, and hurry. Oh, sure, but where are you going? I told you, explain later. We'll both be dead men if Preston catches us. Preston? Yeah, now will you hurry? Slim needed no further urging. The two men, Bart's sled cutting the trail, drove to the edge of Crystal Lake, where, to Slim's amazement, Bart called a halt. What are you going to do now? If you're in such a hurry, Shut what up is... and help me turn this sled over. There. How about the dogs? Leave them here. I ought to toss this hat. There. I don't get Whether it. you will. From here on, we'll ride the gates in your sled. Mush, you Malamutes! Mush! <laughs> Sergeant Preston did go back to the cabin. Finding it empty, he prepared to leave just as Muriel came up the trail. Sergeant Preston, back so soon? Where is Bart, Muriel? Oh, I don't know. He was here when I left. I see. All right, King, come on. Get the dogs up. Leaving again? Yes, I'm looking for Bart, you see. He'll be back. He might be making a round of the trap line. I don't think so. When I left here on my way to Higby, I was about halfway to town when I found Ray Thomas on the trail. Murdered. Ray Thomas? He'd been murdered and robbed. But I don't that, see what... Uh, that poke Bart dropped was initial R.T. Oh. I'm sorry, Muriel. <coughs> I'm ready, King. Good. 
Goodbye, Sergeant. Good luck. On, King! On, you husky! <laughs> Approaching Crystal Lake, the Mounties' sharp eyes sighted the overturned sled before the dogs came abreast of it. Ho, oh, King! Ho, oh, you husky! <laughs> nice bark sled. And his hat. Mm. Must have been taking the trail fast and then... Oh, King, too bad we have an eyes to see the bottom of this lake. In Gates City a few days later, the two killers, Bart Johnson and his partner Slim, stood at the bar in the Golden Peacock Cafe. Neither of them were recognizable as the men who had fled the law. To those in the cafe, they were just two strangers. Sure was a good idea, Bart. Disguising ourselves like this. Yeah, I wasn't anxious to feel that rope around my neck. What made you so sure Preston knew it? His eyes, when I dropped that coat, made me as sure as I'll ever be. We found Thomas... Well, that'd be all you'd need. You knew something when we came to the cabin in the first place. Well, <laughs> your own mother wouldn't recognize you in that get him. <laughs> hey! Yep? One more here. How about you? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Make that two. Right. Tomorrow we'll start for Skagway in the States. And what about your sister? <laughs> I can't be worrying about her. Yep, here you are, strangers. Always wanted to get back to the States. Look, you see that? Yeah. Come on, let's get out of no, here. No, 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 wait a minute. Take it easy. You'll never know us. Just stand like you are. Well, Red, how's business? Well, oh, ain't to blame, Sergeant. How you been? Just fine. Say, I heard about poor Ray. Yes. Shot in the back. Never knew what hit him, I guess. Well, somebody made a nice haul. Ray was carrying a heap of dust. Got any idea who done it? I did have, but it, it's too... Uh, what you looking at, Sergeant? That man holding the glass down at the end of the bar. You ever seen him before? No. Them two are strangers, as far as I know. Why? I'm going down there, Red. There's a back entrance to the cafe, isn't there? Yeah? Uh, you leaving then? No, I'm not. But those two friends might try to. King, you go to the back entrance and wait there. Better show him where it is, Red. Yeah, sure. Come on, King. Come on, boy. Well, you two boys are strangers in town, aren't you? What difference does that make, Monty? Hmm. Strange. I have a feeling we've met before. You must be thinking of somebody else. Maybe. The man I'm thinking of wore a ring just like that one. Let's see it, stranger. I won this ring in a poker game. Now, if you have no objections, Marty... I'd like to see that ring. Hell with the light, the stones you're not show. taking it off. So long, mister. Come on, Frank. This isn't so long, Bart. Why, you... Hey, put that gun away, you. I don't want no shooting in here. You heard what he said, Bart. Go back to her, Slim. You won't get out that way. My helper will stop you. <laughs> your helper. Come on, Slim. If anyone here makes a move, it'll be his last one. That wasn't such a smart bluff, Mountie. Yeah, your help. King's teeth and old bluff. Adam King. <laughs> Stop him, boy. Take that, you barman. Fetch the gun. Let my you. Let go my arm. He's tearing my arm apart. All right, King. I guess you've had enough, Bart. Stand right where you are, Slim. You win, Mountie. The law always wins. I thought you'd drown when I found your sled by the lake. But that ring on your finger gave you away. Put these handcuffs on them, Red. <laughs> Yes, King. The case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking... This is the Michigan Radio Network.